Hello, my name is Caden Stevens, Technical Marketing Engineer for Cisco's Software Defined Access Solution Team. Today, this is the fourth part in a four part series, so it's the last video of our Building SDA from Scratch series, and we'll continue on with host onboarding. I did a brief overview of what SD Access is in the first video in this series, so if you feel like you need to go watch that, please feel free to do so, or you can check out the latest Cisco DNA Center datasheet. All right, so host onboarding in SD Access enables the attachment of endpoints to the fabric nodes. The host onboarding workflow allows you to authenticate, classify, and assign an endpoint to a scalable group, and then associate to an IP pool and virtual network. So the key steps to achieve this are working with the authentication template selection tool, working with virtual networks and IP pool selections, fabric SSID selections, and the static port settings as well. We'll get into every piece of this in this demo that I'll be walking through today. In our first video in the series, we assign IP address pools to our virtual networks, and this is a requirement in order to enable hosts to communicate within the fabric. When an IP pool is configured in SD Access, Cisco DNA Center immediately connects to each edge node to create the appropriate switched virtual interface, or SVI for short, to allow the host to communicate. In addition, an Anycast gateway is configured for each IP pool on all the edge nodes within a fabric domain. This is a critical part about SD Access because it allows hosts to easily roam to any edge node with no additional provisioning. All right, so now that we know the background about host onboarding, let's go ahead and get started. So I'll head over to provision, and then under SD Access, I'll click on fabric sites. Now, one can say there are two different ways to get to the host onboarding workflow, and that's dependent on whether the preview new SD Access button is toggled on or not. If it's toggled off, we'll click on one of our fabric sites. So I'll go ahead and click on building four here. And then I'll click on host onboarding to view the workflows that we'll be going through. Again, we'll be working on the authentication template, virtual networks, wireless SSIDs, and port assignments. Before we continue on, let's go ahead and go back and see how it looks with the preview new SD access button on. It's the same process. Let's go check out our fabric sites. Click on building four. This time you can see that the host onboarding tab is gone, but authentication template, wireless SSIDs, and port assignment is still present. To get to the virtual networks portion, we'll go to provision, and under SD access, we'll go over to virtual networks. I'm going to head back to fabric sites, and I'm actually going to toggle this button off for this video. Let's go ahead to building four. And we'll go over to host onboarding again. And under authentication template, we'll make sure we select the option that best suits our needs. I am already working with the closed authentication template per my previous videos, and that is why it is pre-selected for me. We'll head over next to virtual networks. And we'll get started with the infra VN to accommodate our access points and extended nodes. I'll go ahead and click on infra VN. I'll go ahead and hit add. And for the IP address pool, I'll select B4 AP. For the pool type, I'll select AP and I'll give it a VLAN name. Add, deploy, and apply. All right, I'm going to repeat this process a couple more times for my campus, IoT, and guest purposes. I'll speed through this part as we just went over the workflow together. When working with different virtual networks other than the infra virtual network, we actually get a couple more of options we can select. For now, I'm just going to choose data as the traffic type and click add. All right, I've finished associating my IP pools to their corresponding virtual networks. 
on this campus virtual network, I did enable a wireless pool so that way we can use it in the SSID portion of our host onboarding process. I'll go ahead and head back and we'll head over to wireless SSIDs. This SSID populated when I went configured my wireless profile. I can choose our pool here. So I'll click Campus VN. And I won't be assigning an SGT at this time. I'll click Deploy. Apply. And now that address pool is associated with the SSID that I have. Let's head over to Port Assignments. Cisco DNA Center automatically applies the default authentication template to all edge nodes and all ports through the global template that we did earlier, as well as overriding that to select specific edge nodes and ports to have a different type of authentication template. For the AP we will be using, I will scroll down to Gigabit 1014 where the AP is connected. I'll click Access Point as the device type. And for the authentication template, I'll leave it as none as this is different from the global authentication template that we configured earlier, which we selected as closed authentication at that time. I'll go ahead and click update. And then I'll scroll down and click deploy and apply. Thank you for checking out part four of four of our building SDA from scratch series where we went over host onboarding. In this series of videos, we built out our fabric from start to finish. We first went over the design of our fabric, like setting up integration with ICE, our network settings, IP address pools. Then we were ready to go into network segmentation and group-based policy in conjunction with ICE. Afterwards, we provisioned our devices to their sites, gave them fabric roles, and verified their LISP configurations. Then we closed out with this video on host onboarding. It's very important to note that the SD access journey does not stop here. The videos in this series were designed to help you build out your fabric, but just know this was barely scratching the surface. One can dive deeper into macro segmentation or group based policy, or you can learn more about endpoint analytics that delves into the visibility and protecting your endpoints and IOT devices. Wherever you are in your journey, Please feel free to go check out more videos on our SDA channel and remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Take care.